Hello and welcome to My Voices Have Tourette's and that's why we're all in this together. My name is Dan Zarin, I'm your host. Today's episode is brought to you by Gameslist Studio, where we are recording, The Secret Cellar, Iceland's first and only comedy club, and Smaldi's Volcano Sauce is the best hot sauces I've ever had in my life. So today we're doing a bit of a, a special episode here. I decided to reach out to um, people with anxiety and, and ask them you know, what they think are things about anxiety that are either not uh, known about or they're not discussed about, they're not talked about. And uh, basically, I brought uh, my friend Thodotler Thodotson, who was in uh, the uh, episode number four, yep. Anxiety. Uh, he is going to talk about, I'm going to read all these responses over to him, yep. and he is going to uh, answer them based on his, uh, or talk about them based on your experiences. Yeah, sure. How anxious were those people when you just uh, came up to them and, and asked them about anxiety? Well, that's the thing. Is I, I just walked up to them in person. Yeah. And I was like, tell me about your anxiety right now. Right now. Right now. Tell me about it right now. So, so it's like and a, just so you know, yeah. if you don't answer correctly, your grandfather will pass away. Yeah, that's uh, that's basically how uh, anxiety works. <laughs> that is, episode over. All yes, right. thank that's you so much. That was a quick... Uh, no, but uh, Thought Outler, welcome back to the podcast. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. How are you doing? I am actually fine. Do you I'm, doing uh, well? Yeah, I'm not in a panic attack at the moment. <laughs> Have you had any uh, moments of anxiety lately? Uh, every moment of my life. <laughs> <laughs> I, love, I love when people say that they're deathly afraid of dying because of anxiety. Is yeah. just, and no pun intended, of no, course. No, but of course not. No. Just, the, it's, that's the thing about anxiety. It's just that constant freak out moment. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's, always, it's, it's always lingering there. The, the anxiety is always there. You know of it. But sometimes you can, you know, you can kind of ignore it, but it's always there. So basically, I'm it's hiding in the bushes. So, so I'm going to read a bunch of responses from people with anxiety, and it's going to give you anxiety just thinking about the anxiety about their anxiety that yeah. they want answers to. And then <laughs> my answer won't be good enough uh, for those people with the anxiety. Who, who <laughs> so like I'm, I'm, uh, I'm probably going to do more bad than good. Right. Yeah, uh, that's what I feel now uh, <laughs> in my anxiety. All right. Well, let's, <laughs> let's one, give it a one thing about anxiety is you overthink things. This is very true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As a person with anxiety myself, yes, yeah. I definitely agree with that. Yes. Um. So we're we're just gonna get started here, and uh, so just to the listeners, just so you know, um, I'm just gonna try to re read off everything that people said. Yep. Uh, some of them may be similar, uh, but uh, maybe you come up with other uh, answers to them. Sure. Uh, but I wanted to include everyone, uh, so people don't feel left out uh, and get anxiety yeah. about being left out. And of course, because uh, yeah. I would get that anxiety. <laughs> and I mean, and of course, everybody's experience is different, so yeah. I might not. Uh, have experienced the same thing as other people with anxiety, but I mean, I'll just uh, try to uh, answer it from my point of view. This is just based on your experiences yeah. personally. Yeah. Okay. So the first one is that anxiety is nothing to be afraid of or afraid about. What? <laughs> <laughs> Getting a little scared there? Yeah, I got really scared about that. Now, I mean, of course, you shouldn't be uh, afraid of it. And, and the more you embrace it and talk about it, I think the less anxious you are. Mm -hmm. uh, before I didn't know that I had anxiety, I had a lot more anxiety because <laughs> I didn't know what was going on. And uh, I, I just thought it was I was, t you know you know just maybe physically sick or ill because you know you would get yeah. these panic attacks or, or just this feeling of yes yeah, constant like self-doubt and and, and uh, basically anxiety but uh, without knowing what's going on that uh, makes you more anxious and so yeah um of course, not being afraid of of, of uh, your anxiety uh, could help a lot. Uh, just just knowing that you have it. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, well, it's actually an, it's an interesting. Well, it actually, isn't it? It's a very interesting response because it's also that thing of like, if you think about it in the sense that you know, so many. I mean, everyone deals with a certain level of anxiety. Of course. So, um, but uh, that that also does kind of give give people anxiety is the fact that well, well. Why do I have it different than them? If everyone has it, why do I have yeah. it different? And I do, I do feel the feel there is a bit of fear uh, attached to it because of the fact that you know uh, either because everyone has it or no one has it. Yeah. You know, I remember before I went to the doctor the first time, like to talk about 
uh, because my my brother, oldest brother, he has uh, depression, anxiety. You know, basically name it. He he has it. He's like buffet of of mental diseases. You know, there's another step now, <laughs> <laughs> basically. <laughs> and so before I went to get help, uh, I remember I had a, a, a you know. A, had a uh, you know booked a t- uh, appointment for uh, at the doctor and like i started to overthink and i was like what well, maybe if my anxiety isn't enough like i'm bothering the doctor like <laughs> i would go and he was like so uh, what, what are you anxious about i'm like uh, like just the, just that that's not enough anxiety for you to uh, waste my time i was getting uh, like i was anxious that my anxiety wasn't <laughs> Was it, it wasn't it was enough. enough, you know. So it's not it, enough for the show. For the show, my voices have Tourette's, no. and it's not enough for your doctor as well. No, yeah. Was so, this sorry? Was this your doctor or therapist? It was a, a, like a the first thing I I I, I seeked out to was a, a doctor. So okay. It was like a yeah. So uh, yeah, I, I was getting like a panic attack. I was like, what if my anxiety isn't enough for the doctor? <laughs> you know, and and but rationally, I thought, well, if I'm getting, you know anxiety about my anxiety not being enough i think i have enough anxiety then <laughs> it's like that bit that you have except it's like like i just want to get a stamp that goes you're officially not cray cray enough <laughs> <laughs> come on I, oh. oh man could you imagine could you imagine a therapist like you show up to the therapist and they're just like I- i'm i'm gonna stop you right now um you're not anxious enough. Yeah, well, no. uh, if you want to work on it, maybe come back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> on a later you're basically date. wasting my time. You're wasting your time. You know, you, you there. There are people that out there that are uh, have it worse than you. So you, please don't uh, take away my time. I could be helping somebody else who needs uh, my help more than you. Just leave me alone. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm sorry. You know, I'll, I get I'll get more anxious next time. It's an interesting idea for a bit. Is uh, <laughs> imagining a world where the anxious brain is actually accurate. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, that would be a terrible world. Yeah. All right, so so that, uh, let's move on to the next one here, though, because we oh, we actually got a lot a lot of responses here. Uh, so the second one's a little bit long. Um, so I don't know that people realize that we know these thoughts are bonkers, sometimes even while we have them. It's not like I'm aware that thinking my friend is dead in a ditch somewhere because she didn't answer my texts for 90 minutes is completely insane. But even as you're trying to tell someone or tell yourself how unlikely that scenario is, the anxious thoughts are louder than the rational thoughts and you end up uh, shaking and crying anyways. Oh, yes, I, I can relate to that. And also, like, if... Like you, you could also add on to that. Like, if I don't worry about my friend, like, if I th- am I tempting like faith, then, like, <laughs> is it like, um, you know, uh, oh, he he doesn't give a, a damn about his friend. He's not anxious about him. I'll I'll uh, you know I'll let him die in a ditch somewhere. You know, <laughs> so so but it's like. It, you you're kind of protecting your uh, your uh, people around you by being anxious about them. Yeah. Yeah. So a little uh, bit. yeah. And so you don't want to uh, you know <laughs> like that, the, the, I'm just talking about from like the anxiety brain, not rational thinking. Yeah, so so, so this, this is kind of like your brain is maybe going through like wow, if if I don't think about the worst case scenario, then the worst case scenario will happen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's like OCD in a bit. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a bit away. But uh, yeah, it is it is you, like you know sometimes that your thoughts are irrational. Mm-hmm. So that's why you have uh, like uh, anxiety disorder because it, it's not normal anxiety. You're just like like for me with with the phone thing, you know, just when the phone rings, I almost mm-hmm. get a panic attack. But my rationally, I just think this is just a phone call. What you know, this it doesn't always have to be bad, or it doesn't have to be bad, even though somebody's calling you. Right. But in my inner system, it's like high alert, high alert, the danger, danger, somebody calling. That must be that everybody you know and everybody you have met in your life are dead, and uh, the phone call is about to, uh, you know, it's about. Then somebody telling you that oh yeah uh, uh, every, everybody you know is dead now. <laughs> well, I was gonna I was gonna ask actually. Uh, so so when you get a, a message on your phone and it and it says like uh, hey I wanted to tell you something and that and then it cuts out like they they don't respond. Yeah. What are thought like? Duh, are there any specific thoughts that you've had that go through your head like certain scenarios or uh, are the things that you think are going on but you know are not going on? I mean I 
when when somebody just texts me like, "Hey, we need to talk," or "I need to talk to you," I mean, it's never a pleasant thing. That I, I, it, for my, my brain immediately goes, "Oh, that person now uh, uh, thinks I've done something to them, uh, wronged them in some way." Uh, maybe somebody lied something about me, uh, is framing me for something, <laughs> uh, or they're telling me that somebody died. That's uh, usually kind of like the the go uh, what goes to my mind is like, who is that now? Who, uh, who died? <laughs> you like, uh, uh, and so yeah, it, it's don't text your friend if he has anxiety. Don't text them just, hey, we need to talk. Do a smiley face after. Just a smiley face. Then I know. Oh, he wants to. T- the person wants to talk to me. It, it's, it's something good. It's- okay, real quick. Because you, brought, <laughs> you brought up the idea of oh, like I'm imagining that it might be someone who has died. Mm. I get so much anxiety just thinking about the thought of someone calling me mm. to tell, or not even just me calling someone yeah. to tell them that someone has died. How do you do that over the phone? I mean, think about it. Like yeah. if some if someone uh, if someone's died and you're calling like oh, a loved one or a, f- yeah. a friend yeah. and you're just like, first of all, how do you start? Like, hey, uh, I need to talk to you. There's yeah. something I need to yeah. tell you. Hey. You can't see what's going on on their end. No. What if they're at a birthday party and yeah, and yeah. you just forgot to give them enough time <laughs> to to be like, oh, I have time. Yeah. No, uh, I. I just need to talk to you now. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, this has happened, and then the person has yeah. to has to be like, "Sorry, little Timmy, I gotta I gotta leave your birthday party because I'm about to go cry." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think I would actually just like send the message before I call, like, "Hey, prepare. I'm going to call you with bad news. Are oh. you ready to receive this bad news? Uh, are you like sitting down? Are you alone? Like, can you can you handle this now?" So. Yeah, it would actually be good to get, get like a warning before. <laughs> but not everyone has the rational anxiety that no, you have. No. See, your anxiety is rational. Yeah. You're at least thinking about everyone. You're making yeah. sure that they're taken care of yeah. by being completely terrified about their well-being. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the, uh, the next one is uh, that it gives me tremendous social anxiety. Uh, that's something you can relate to. Uh, I do. I and do. in situations of heightened anxiety, I prefer to not go somewhere with a large crowd. Uh, that I hate to have to deal, uh, that I hate that I have to deal with it. So I really hate that it affects the people I care about. Yeah. And so that ends up being like, you might sometimes lie to people that you care about. Hey, do you want to come to this birthday party? Do you want to come to this gathering? Oh, I'm busy. Mm -hmm. You're not busy. You're just anxious about meeting a lot of new people or just meeting a lot of people. Mm Mm-hmm. Not even new people, just, oh, there's going to be a lot of people. Because when you have social anxiety, meeting people is work. Mm-hmm. It, it it drains your energy. And uh, and uh, so you, you might like, okay, how what, what situation am I getting into? Can I, is there a place I can go and just for a breather? Uh, right. Can I, can I leave? Uh, can I, you know, uh, how is this going to be? Is, uh, is it a type of situation I have to talk to everybody or can I, <laughs> do, is there a safe zone somewhere, you know? So a little safe space in the back. Yeah. Yeah. Like if you're about to have a panic attack, have a panic <laughs> room, have a panic room in every party. Panic space. Panic space. Panic space. Yes. We, we have, we've got to make that a thing. I know. Oh, I, I know. At, at concerts, of uh, venues, yeah. they've got to have a panic exactly. space. <laughs> a little space for you to have your panic yeah, attack yeah, in the yeah. back. And and like sometimes I get so o- overwhelmed, uh, I just leave and mm. I don't even say goodbye to people because, oh, they might try to stop me. So I kind of, I just sneak out, you know. Yeah. And so I've no, I've noticed that a couple of times. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it would be a party. Like, I'll be well, like, "Hey, where'd well, Dollar go?" And yeah. then you, and then I send you a message. Hey, where are you at? Yeah. I'm at home. Yeah. Oh. How? <laughs> when did you go? How did you leave? <laughs> I'm like a ninja. <laughs> You're an anxiety ninja. Yeah. That only leaves parties. Like we should- a ninja kind of tries to smuggle in somewhere. <laughs> This ninja is going out. We got to do like the, the RuPaul Eliza Sessinger thing. Yeah. And just every once in a while we say something, we go hashtag that thing. Yeah. So, so, hashtag anxiety ninja. Yep. Anxiety ninja. <laughs> That's a good, that's a good, we're going to have to, we're going to have to make that. Yep. Yeah, I, ah, I love though the idea though of, of uh, the, the panic, panic uh, space. Yeah. It was a panic space. Panic yeah. zone or panic a space. Panic space, yeah. panic, uh, panic zone and having like a, like a, a waitress for you or a waiter just <laughs> yeah. come over. Uh, sir, you appear to be having a panic attack. Would you like a water? <laughs> <laughs> I would like 
for you not to talk to me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> is there a difference between going to, well, for you at least, is yeah. there a difference between going to, well, let's say, a bar or a concert? Oh, are you less uh, well, likely to be anxious at a concert? So at a concert, I probably won't have to deal with talking to a lot of people. There's going to be music going on. Right. But it is going to be crowded and like, a, 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 you know, uh, so that that kind of, you know, brings up the anxiety. It's just like, oh, you, you kind of feel like you're trapped or I can't leave. There's so many people here. Mm-hmm. But so it's, it's kind of like a little bit of different anxiety. Right. So it's like, oh, it's just going to be so crowded and like everybody in your face and everything. But you don't have to worry about the social situation of, of small talk. The, right. The, the, horrific small talk i yeah but so like oh i'm going to a party i have to do the small talk to everybody that's gonna i'm gonna say something stupid and uh, (laughs) and they're gonna think i'm dumb and they're all gonna hate me and so yeah well what would you what what would you say would be the difference then between because maybe a concert would be more of a claustrophobic type of situation people that are afraid of being in small you know uh like you know those types of situations are being in really cramped spaces so yeah. things like that do you have any issues with that or so is your anxiety more of the more the social aspect in those situations uh, i for me it's it's harder with uh, the the you know the small talk and the interactive kind of uh, so this it, is very difficult for you what we're doing right now no because <laughs> I, I I know you and we, we uh, we've known each other for a long time so it gets easier after you the more you know people and the more you hang out with them and everything right and uh, but I mean it, and if if it gets uh, bad I will just sneak out <laughs> yeah so if you if you're gonna ask a question and no answer comes then I've, I've uh, I'm already gone <laughs> I just looked at I look I'll, I'll look down at my notes see, see the next question and then be like so the next one is dollar where'd you go <laughs> the, the chair is just spinning <laughs> He's anxiety ninja <laughs> like like a uh, wily e. coyote yeah <laughs> Uh, meet me. Uh, oh, that's oh, where did Rogue he go? Runner. Oh, yeah. just the room next uh, next door. So, so the next one is uh, that that if you see me in a corner working on controlled breathing, uh, I'm fine. Just trying to bring myself back to a good spot. Yeah, and sometimes you really do need just to be alone. Uh, sometimes people that don't understand social anxiety, people having social anxiety, but people that are really in the opposite, you know, extroverts, they were like, oh, that person is feeling bad. I want to go and help that person. And I want to go and help them so much. I'm going to be in their face <laughs> and I'm going to hug them. And I'm going to like, hey, and they will drain the rest of your energy. The right. little one, you're like you're recharging. You're, ch- you're like, you're charging, kind of getting your energy back. And that person comes and take the rest uh, and, and drains you, drains you. So sometimes it's best to kind of leave people alone. Have you ever had those moments? Like, have you ever had a panic attack or like, like almost had a panic attack, oh. like been on the verge of it. And then you're, you're like just about to get yourself calm and oh. someone says, Hey, thought dollar, how are you? And then it just <laughs> and, sets it off. Yeah, uh, yes. Uh, that's happened many times. Uh, especially like sometimes maybe I'm not, uh, maybe not getting like a panic attack, but I just need a little, like at the secret cellar, we're doing shows and, and then like all the communities are sitting together and uh, all the audience is sitting over there. Sometimes you probably know it. Sometimes I'm in one corner just by myself. Oh yeah. Yeah. And that's just because I need to kind of get, get the, some of the energy back again, because uh, it takes work to be talking to people. And then people like come to me, hey, come sit with us. Hey, uh, join us. I'm like, no, 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 no. I, I just need a little little bit, a little break. I just need a little break. <laughs> Thought dollar, come join us. I'm at the same table as you. Yeah. You're five tables <laughs> over. <laughs> hey, we're all in the same space here. Why do you need me to be next to you? You know. <laughs> these are phenomenal responses, by the way. I, I, I really like these uh uh, I mean, I mean yours as well, but yeah. I'm, I'm just saying like the the ones that. Oh, I, I thought got. you were complimenting me. I was yes. like, yes, well, oh. I'm, I'm, well, I am complimenting you. I you're, thought you're, maybe you're... I'm not doing so such of a bad job. <laughs> no, you're doing a great job. Um, 
<laughs> uh, though the next one is that anxiety doesn't affect my ability to. Oh, this is a uh, phenomenal one. No, uh, I've I've thought about this so many times. Yep. Thought that my anxiety doesn't affect my ability to be functional or responsible. It just sometimes makes it a bit of a challenge. Yeah, that's so true. And it, you might need to do things a little bit differently than other people. I think again with that, you might maybe need some alone time, or like oh we're we're all in this together you know like, yeah. you're like no oh, like uh, the name of the, uh, the uh, episode yeah and so like at work okay there's a problem or, or you know let's just all do this as a group project oh could i maybe just do this by myself you know uh, i i'm actually not gonna accomplish much in a group at this moment at least you know so sometimes you really just have to uh, let people that have anxiety and everything sometimes we just need uh, to be alone for a little bit yeah <laughs> but you uh, i mean you do have some str- strategies for overcoming certain situations so, like i mean of course you know there are certain situations well like uh like you know using the phone for for example and we talked about uh-huh. in, in in episode four anxiety where uh you were talking about we were talking about phone calls and yeah. you were talking about how video calls are okay because you can see the person yeah. for but some, doing for, an for audio some, call yeah. for some reason it's better I are don't... there are there any other like kind of backdoor routes or thought, like kind of strategic moves that you've you've picked up over the years that have worked specifically for you to help with any specific uh, moments make it easier for you? Yeah, I'm not sure if I... I, I might do something that I don't even realize myself. <laughs> so uh, I, I'm not thinking about anything, remembering anything right now, a bit like, except the the thing, I don't know why it works, but video calls, you're like, that's right. better because I see the person and... and it, it, but that's not doesn't mean that I like video calls. <laughs> I, I prefer just like, send me a text, you know, I, because it's it's all, always about, for me especially, is saying the wrong thing. Right. Uh, sounding stupid. <laughs> so I, like texting, I can, okay, I can go over the text, like, okay, this, yes, this is the right response. I want to, uh, uh, so, I don't know. That's probably that's why we use a humor a lot. You know, you, you just like you maybe to give myself a little bit of a time to think. I do something funny first, but then I'm thinking about the yeah. real response uh, at the same time. Like put something funny out there, and people are like, "Oh, you're so silly!" And, <laughs> and 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 then I just like, okay, now I have a real answer. <laughs> well, that's a, I mean, that is kind of what all of us do in the show. Yeah. Is is uh, we use humor as a way of making ourselves feel better about what we have. Of course. And 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 for me, like like we've we've said that probably a million times, but like making fun of what we have and everything makes it so much easier, and it it becomes more of like a a good thing. Oh, this happened. I can talk about it on stage, and, and it's, it's not a negative thing anymore. I mean, seriously, how, how how often have you had something like really really shit happen to you yeah. that you get so friggin' anxious, <laughs> and then you're just like. Wait, this is a really good stand-up bit. <laughs> yeah, that has actually happened, and and that's like especially after you kind of learned how to like use everything that happens to you. Like, oh, I can use this on stage. You have to put, kind of put yourself, uh, your mind to that place that you can always like. Oh, I can use that. I can use that. I can use that. So now when something happens, you're like, that's a great <laughs> bit. The, this horrible thing that has happened to me. This is so funny. You know, <laughs> I remember you. You did that to me once because yeah. I, I had a new tick and uh, and uh, like I remember I was uh, I was like Thoreller, I got a new tick today, and you're just like, is it good for stage? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I was like. I mean, maybe, 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 yeah. but give me, give me a moment, motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, I have to deal. It's just happened. I need to deal with this. But, but can you use it? Is it funny? You know. But, but it, I mean, humor does help. I'm. Mean, oh, it doesn't help lot. for. I will. I will say that it doesn't help for everyone. It no. doesn't work for everyone. No, no. Because some people just simply don't want to find the humor in it. No. But, no. but uh, for us, it has uh, worked very, very well. Yeah, and you you can't really. Though this is coming from like I'm such a hypocrite saying this, but you can't really hide yourself behind humor too much. You all, you also have to be kind of real. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, and which is I'm uh, which I'm always trying to do more of. Uh, so, but you gotta have the humor in it as well. That was yeah. such a great part of uh, Hannah Gadsby's Nanette. Do yeah. do you remember remember when she did a bit? 
about getting beaten up. Yeah. And uh, she she made it humorous. And then later in the special, she told the real story. Yeah. And and talked about the fact that like for comedy we. We, you know, it's kind of like that thing of don't ruin uh, a good, like, there's no need to ruin a good joke with the truth. Yeah. Uh, it's a, it's a thing of like, sometimes there, I mean, there's a lot of what we have that actually is very serious. Um, yeah. And, and if, uh, if we can find ways of, of preserving the truth, but, but, but telling the funny sides of it, that's what, I mean, that's what I like to do. I know you like to do that as well. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, uh, but it, it can be difficult sometimes. Of course. And, to and find that line. Yeah, it is. And it is. And, and, but you know, yeah, yeah, you kind of have to find the kind of little, the balance of, of being truthful to yourself and, and what you have, but you can always look at the funny side as well. Right. Uh, this one's a bit uh, kind of uh, similar to this, uh, that uh, we who struggle are trying to find ways uh, uh, to manage and cope daily. Um, we're capable of accepting and giving love. Yeah. I feel I feel like the f- the first part was was uh, kind of like what we talked about. Uh the the second one is kind of like how you would end your Tinder profile. <laughs> <laughs> like you you would have you would have a Tinder profile that's just like I'm very like I'm I'm very loving, very caring and I'm and and even though I have anxiety, I'm yeah. very capable of accepting uh, yeah, and giving yeah, yeah. love. <laughs> I think people that you know struggle with things, they are really you know aware when somebody else feels bad you know? yeah yeah like i'm really i can see if somebody is having a bad time sometimes a lot better than a, uh, a lot of other people i'm like can't you see that uh, that person is is uh, having anxiety or is feeling oh, what i didn't know that, that's why they do, did that or, or that's how they why they reacted like that I'm like oh yeah. so i think you have a lot of emphasis uh, uh, or or Empathy, 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 yeah. empathy emphasis. Uh, so you have a lot of empathy. Uh, <laughs> you cut that, cut that out. <laughs> yeah. Would you like to try it one more time with your Icelandic <laughs> accent? <laughs> empathy. <laughs> See, there it was. Yeah, yes. I've so, known. I've noticed sometimes that is a trick that, that works for Icelanders. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Because Icelanders get so used to Americanizing their accent. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and, then then they, just, and then you get lost in something, and you're like, "Oh, I have to go back to the roots." Empathy. Yes. Empathy. <laughs> no, no H in that. Just, no, no, just, no, no, no. just <laughs> with a T Y. Yeah. Empathy. <laughs> and we have a lot of that. We have a lot of that. People that uh, struggle. So you can always see if somebody else is struggling. But the, I mean, uh, the 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 last part we're capable of accepting and giving love. The, yeah. I mean, there is a lot of uh, anxiety in relationships as well. Of course, um, insecurity I mean, and I, I've right. I'm yeah, I mean yeah. you know you, we've we've talked about the fact that you know like going on dates. So, uh, I mean that's a lot of the, 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 there's a lot of anxiety for everyone in that oh, yeah. situation. Yeah. But I mean, how is it like? Well, what is it like when you have? Uh, the disorder attached to it yeah i mean it's terrifying it's really terrifying to go like meet somebody for the first time because especially because how how my anxiety works is the thing of sounding <laughs> you're saying something stupid like empathy or something <laughs> you know do you have do you have any uh good I, i'm anx- gonna be thinking i'm gonna be thinking about how i screwed that word up <laughs> for the rest of the day Yep, and, and and until this uh, episode comes out, I'm gonna be thinking about that. I'm like, oh, people are gonna hear me screw up, and and they're gonna think I'm the most dumb, dumbest person on on the planet. And uh, if it makes you feel any better, we just feel that way anyway. Okay, that's good. Then I, then I don't have to worry about that. It just it already has happened. And <laughs> but do you have any good uh, well, like anxiety pickup lines that you've ever used? <laughs> anxiety. Like, have you, have you ever used it to your benefit? Well, with a date. Oh. Uh, I mean, I, I like if I hear like, "Hey, you're kind of awkward." <laughs> like, well, yeah, I have anxiety, and I don't know what. I'm, uh, like, just being truthful with it and and honest. Like, yo, yeah, I I have no idea what I'm supposed to say. No, I, I'm 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 basically in a panic attack <laughs> right now because uh, yeah, I, I'm in- intimidated by you, <laughs> by your beauty. Oh. Oh, there we go. Uh, yeah, there we go. Yeah, yeah. the right. beauty and your intelligence is so uh, you know uh, overwhelming. I, I just <laughs> I'm in a state of panic right now. Hashtag throw out the lines. Yeah. <laughs> and then I swoop out. And then you swoop out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right as you right as you get that that positive response, <laughs> then they respond and they're like, "Wait, where'd he what? go?" <laughs> 
Oh, anxiety where, ninja. Where, where is he? Hashtag anxiety ninja. <laughs> you gotta you gotta say hashtag every time you use it too. <laughs> like like it's not yeah. just like it's not it's like you, you say know hashtag anxiety yeah. ninja and run out. It's not like anxiety ninja. Yeah. It's hashtag anxiety ninja. <laughs> like what's wrong with this guy? He, he whispered something, hashtag something, and run ran out. Oh, that is phenomenal. <laughs> this next one actually would be great to talk to Hannah about. Oh my, because it relates to her a lot. But uh, the, someone said, I pee five times before I leave the house. <laughs> that's some OCD thing. Probably. Yeah, that's all. But that's not that's not something you deal with. No. I uh, Yeah. Is it that they, they might, they're just, to be sure, your bladder is empty. So you want like, I, I won't be in a situation that I have to pee and I can't go to go pee or like, well, uh, yeah. Well, the bladder uh, sometimes is connected with anxiety. Or, oh, no, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. I mean, like when you get really, really anxious and you and then you realize you have to pee and then you gotta get I, even more anxious and you're like, I literally just finished peeing. What I, am I, I doing? I think every performer knows that uh, before you go on stage, <laughs> it's toilet time before. Oh, well, I think <laughs> I've, you know, I've noticed something interesting about that. It's yeah. not that... I've noticed it's half and half. Some yeah. people have to pee and some people have to poop. Yep. And some people really like, oh, I've had nights where I'm just like, I'm not even sure I can hold this in. No, no. I mean, once you turn 30, uh, you start you start <laughs> being really afraid of the fact that oh. I don't know if I can hold this in no, much you, longer. You can't trust anything after 30. Uh, you can't trust your body after 30. <laughs> and and it's, I don't know, it's a good word for this in, in Icelandic. And I don't, know, I don't know how to basically... Uh, of course there's a word in Icelandic. It's called stress skita. Stre- uh, stress anxi- poop. Anxiety poop, yeah. <laughs> basically. <laughs> and, and that's like, a, oh yeah, uh, before uh, it's like known in the like people that uh, perform, musicians, uh, uh, comedians... They're like, oh, you you have to go on stage in five minutes. All right, toilet time. <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, straskida, uh, anxiety yeah. poop. I remember, I and, know. And that's that's not a solid, uh, you know, that's not a, uh, that's an explosion going how many, on. How many know, comedians situation. have have you known where, where, like, right before they go on stage, like maybe like 20 minutes before, you, you see them go to the bathroom and you're like, okay, I'm going to avoid that bathroom for a little <laughs> yeah. bit. <laughs> I don't know if I'm if I'm telling any secrets here, but uh, you know Carmela, yeah, not the the number two, but the number one. Uh, she, I remember because sometimes usually we would stand in the in the back. Oh, and she, and she, she would be talking to me. Uh, or yeah, she had a bit about this. Uh, yeah, she actually talked about this on stage, so I, I'm I'm not spilling any secrets here. <laughs> but uh, she like pees ten times in one minute before she goes on stage. In one minute. In, in, okay, I'm, I'm I was going to say that's like, actually quite impressive. Yeah, yeah, but in maybe in like five, six, seven minutes before she goes on stage, she goes five times just to pee. She's like a, yeah. a dog, marking the space. I don't know if you own dogs; they always pee a little bit over it, just like a little squirt. Tss, tss, tss. <laughs> and the, like she can't be peeing that much so that many times. You know, so it to, like, goes in. Tss, tss, tss. Um, and <laughs> you, you've actually uh, introduced her on stage, and she's not. She's like. I'm peeing. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like it's like the sneaky pee. Yeah, it's the, the sneaky pee. Hashtag sneaky pee. We got it. We got to do this. Yeah. I need. We need this on video so we can actually yeah. hashtag like, in the yeah, corner. Yeah, yeah. Sneaky, sneaky pee. Hashtag like sneaky pee. pee. <laughs> hashtag anxiety poop. <laughs> Wait. Uh, uh, anxious poop. Anxious. Nah, nah, uh, no. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll figure something out. No, I can't no, think of no, anything no. at the moment. Uh, uh, the next one, though, um, but that that was a very, very good uh, uh, comment there. Um, mental health issue, uh, so anxiety, too, is uh, it's a physical issue. Uh, your, your brain is an organ, not a movie. So basically, uh, I mean, anxiety can cause physical pain. Oh, yeah. I don't think a lot of people realize that. And a lot of people, when they get their first panic attack, they actually think they are getting a heart attack. Oh, very, very common reaction. So people call an ambulance and they go to the hospital like I'm having an, I'm having a heart attack, and they were like, "No, there's nothing wrong with your heart. Oh, it was a panic attack." Be, uh, I, I remember the first time I had a, like a, a real panic attack. I just I, I felt cold. It just came over me this cold. Uh, feeling and really and and, and i i felt like you know it, it was such a surreal almost like and i just thought this is it i'm, I'm just dying i'm like this yeah. is this is there's something happening inside of me it's not supposed to be happening and i'm probably just 
dying, sudden death. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I talk a lot about that on, on uh, in my comedy. But I actually like, know what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. So it, it comes like, and you almost get like kind of dizzy, yeah. and you like feel really cold inside, like chills. Uh, yeah, and and just like a, it's it's it's, it's like a feeling you can't really describe. It's uh, like a feeling of. Uh, reality kind of reality kind of changes and you're like it's kind of like a surreal like you're like what's going on and you're like okay i'm probably just dying so, is it for you the same as me is it like the feeling that your body becomes hollow almost like, almost, like your yeah. body becomes hollow and the, and yeah. you get like this it's kind of like um well, like yeah you know all right this, this sounds ridiculous yeah. but you know like when you see uh when you're watching a video and it fades into another scene yeah it's kind of that fading it, feeling yeah and yeah. you're you're like it's not like uh uh over like a very short period of time you yeah. feel it slowly getting you get colder and colder yeah and you get like a chill through your whole body yeah i like i get that and i, yeah. I feel like my body is hollow yeah uh, it's it's a it's a one way to describe it. It's like really hard to describe. It's like just like this surreal feeling, and you don't know what's going on. Mm -hmm. And like I mentioned, my brother the uh, earlier, uh, and we used to live together. And I remember once he came uh, out of his bedroom, and he was he was having a panic attack, yeah. and, and he was like, "I I am." Uh, you know, I'm I'm just about to disappear. Mm -hmm. uh, he just he felt like he was, just like what do you what do you call it? Just like uh, yeah, he, he just felt like he was gonna disappear, and and mm -hmm. and uh, and he was just like, and I feel like somebody else is breathing through me, and I feel like I'm just gonna dissolve, uh, and, <laughs> and and and. Uh, and well, this is not probably going to work for a lot of people, but humor works really well with us, me and him. Oh. And so uh, we had a cat at the time, <laughs> and I was always like talking for the cat. So the cat had, had his own voice, and the cat had his own like opinions on things and everything. So he came out in a, kind of like a panic attack. He was like, "I feel like I'm, uh, you know, uh, just f floating away in the in the <clears throat> atmosphere. I, I'm, I'm just uh, I'm dissolving." And I, and I said. Oh really? And what does the cat say about that? <laughs> and he just burst out laughing, and it just snapped him out of the kind of panic. This is not going to work for a lot of people, no. but it worked for him. Well, actually, so sorry to cut you off, yeah. boom, but because this is a uh, well, like phenomenal uh, phenomenon yeah. that that uh, like I've uh, I always talk about the uh, the distractions. Yeah, yeah. And that's what it is. It's a yeah. humor distraction. Yeah. Um, because that that is, and it's actually a trick. Uh, I don't know if I told you this, but that's a trick I learned from. From uh, working at a bar, yep. there was one night um, uh, where uh, uh, your brother was there, really drunk. No, okay, uh, <laughs> no, and boom. he was like, "I'm having, I'm, uh, I'm disappearing." And I'm like, <laughs> no, there was a, there was a night where uh, I was working at a bar, and the, uh, there was this the uh, an older guy, yep. probably in late fifties or sixties, and he was. Uh, Oh, so drunk that he he had to be helped up and everything. Yeah. And uh, I remember uh, my my manager at the time and I were were helping him up, and we sat sat him down on a bench. Yeah. And then I just watched my like the my manager at the time. He just went over, and ju he just started having a conversation with him yeah. and tried to distract him from from like yeah. while he was waiting for the cab. Yeah. Like he would just be like, uh, "Where where are you from, by the way?" Yeah. You know, just light conversation. The yeah, guy yeah. would answer, and he'd be like, "Have you checked out the Golden Circle yet? You yeah. got around the country yet?" Because yeah, yeah. uh, the guy was not Icelandic; yeah, he was yeah, uh, yeah. just a tourist. Yeah. And as soon as as soon as the cab got there, like this guy just went from freaking out about being so drunk that yeah. he was falling on his ass yeah. to to being like, "I'm just gonna go. I'm gonna go back to the Airbnb, and I'm I'm gonna take yeah. care of this. I'm yeah. gonna sleep it off." Yeah, yeah. like he felt so much better, and yeah. that's the power of a of a distraction. Yeah, it really, it really, it really works. I mean, maybe not always with humor, but just like a conversation and, and questions or something like that. But it, like, and now it, that became like the go to kind of word or, or just the sentence. When my brother was like, oh, I was always like, yeah. And what does the cat say about that? And he was, yeah. like, he's like, you get me every time with a with a cat. Why does that always work? I'm like, it just uh, the, you know, and um, but. Again, with the uh, getting this panic attack, the, you, you know, the feeling of like, oh, I'm dying. Now, when you know it's a panic attack, a lot easier. When the, yeah. when you feel it is, uh, it's about maybe to start happening, you know, oh, it's a panic attack uh, uh, happening now. And 
you kind of know what's going on. It's like, okay, this is going to take a few seconds. It's going to take a, f- a few moments and it, it'll pass. Right. When this is first happening, you're like, what's happening? What's happening? And that <laughs> makes you even worse. And, 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 and of course, the anxiety gets even more because you don't know what's happening. So it's a, a, just a, a vicious cycle. So right. just knowing what's going on and, and, and it helps so much. It helps so much. Okay, this is a, this is a bit of a loaded, uh, it became a bit of a loaded uh, response. But uh, uh, another thing I do want to uh, ask you about and, and point out is uh, uh, about the physical pain. Yeah. Uh, because there is also the pain from uh, being so anxious that you get stomach pain. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. yeah because yeah. It, and this, I what I love about the the fact that uh, I mean, you brought this up to me at one point because I get physical pain from OCD. Yeah. And we've talked about the similarities about that. Um, and I've noticed that some of your pain that you get, like when you get the stomach pain, yeah. I think it's similar to the pain I get with OCD. Yeah. Yeah. I remember many times when I was younger, you know, being w- woken up, you have to go to school, and I would just like no. I actually think I'm sick. I'm a, I'm about to, you know, throw up. Right. And I actually just thought, like thinking back, oh, I was just anxious to go to school and 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 have to go meet people and you know, do I have to go up and uh, answer questions in front of the whole class or and you just you know. So I I was like almost every morning I was like I I've, like I had no appetite. Right. I I just felt like I had to and and. Often I stay at home because my mom just saw, oh, he's obviously he has the, the, you know, flu or something. No, it's just a, just a panic attack. So it really is, a, can be a, a physical pain. I, yeah. I actually, I once uh, went to, a, uh, I got a massage. Yeah. Uh, and uh, <coughs> I went, I only did it once because I was always like, uh, 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 overthinking it. Right. But, but I just, I, my shoulders were so bad, I just had to go. And so... The massage masseuse uh, starts to uh, hashtag uh, masseuse, <laughs> masseuse. Uh, and uh, she was asking me like, uh, so what are you? Uh, are you in physical labor or, or like like uh, like do you do some hard work? I'm like, no, <laughs> I'm a comedian. <laughs> like, I I hold a microphone sometimes, you know, uh, and it's like. And she was like, "Are you in a stressful job, or 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 like, do you a lot of physical activity? Do you have to hold like, like no? Why? Because you're you're so tense. You're so tense, and like I, I've never like you your whole like body. I was like, well, I do have anxiety. It's like ah <laughs> yes yes. So she was like, you have been for years. You've just been like, um, you know, what would you call just like." You're, you're all like, tense or well, like yeah really really tense yeah you you just like you don't you you never really relaxed you, your whole body is always just like uh, you know and, and that sits in your muscles and everything so I was just like yeah yeah but then so then the uh, masseuse, uh, the masseuse goes goes just relax and you're just uh, like okay I'm gonna uh, relax uh, I'm gonna try yeah I'm gonna, <laughs> no she was always like relax I was like I am <laughs> so, no she, you're not I was like oh. I feel oh. That. Have you ever gotten like more anxiety when they tell you to relax? Oh, that's the worst. Because, that's because you're trying so hard to relax <laughs> and then you realize you're not relaxing. I think that's just like saying somebody who's angry, you know, hey, calm down. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. That's that's not going to help at all. Or just, just, stop, just being, stop being, being angry. <laughs> stop being angry. Stop being anxious. It always makes things worse. You know? Yeah. So, so the, next, the next comment is actually a bit of uh, thought, like, I don't know. It's a bit of a debatable uh, statement. Uh, it does it does involve science. Okay. But um, I I have I mean this has not done anything for me. For example, um, but anxiety can be reduced uh, with walking or swimming in the sunshine, and eating nuts and greafy uh, greafy green <laughs> leafy vegetables. All right. Uh, I think it could help some people. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I think this. I mean, if this person that has anxiety uh, wrote this, uh, who wrote this has anxiety, yeah. and it works for them, then all these are from people. Yeah, with yeah okay, then then awesome. You just have to find. It's not going to work for everybody, I think. But it, whatever works for you is, of course, yeah, you know, go but, for it. But this is like this is might be something that somebody who doesn't have anxiety is like, 
you know, just go uh, and and talking to somebody with depression, for example, people with depression here all the time. Just you know, go out, uh, you know, uh, look at the sunshine, uh, get some, uh, you know, fresh air, uh, go for a walk. Well, if I have depression or anxiety, I, that's stopping me from doing that. I, I, right. I, I'm not going to do that. It's not going to help. And and, and but you with with acti- activities and 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 good you know uh, diet and everything it can help the balance of your chemicals and everything yeah. so of course it's not a bad thing but sometimes some people just physically can't do that you know you just yeah. uh, you, you can't really uh, make yourself go out and, and, and walk or, or you're just too anxious to go out, out and face the world. And, and it's uh, so hard to explain why you're not doing it. Yeah. You, oh, you but, can't, you can't really explain it to anybody who has never experienced it. It's like talking to someone with depression and being, being like, why won't you just get up and go for a walk? Yeah. I can't move. You can move. Yeah, you're just well, being lazy. You know. Well, it's, it's like, mm. I mean, I mean, technically yes, oh. but physically no. Yeah, like, and you can't really, or no. like, you can't really explain it because that's not even really the right no. way of explaining. It's, like, have, it's like trying to explain yeah. uh, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You, you just can't really explain it. <laughs> that's really Icelandic. Like, I can't be bothered. You know? Yeah, but it, it, because you don't, you can't, you can't feel it in, you, like, you can't find it in yourself to actually stand up or go, uh, uh, you know, uh, go out for a walk. It just, you, you, you're not able to do it you yeah. know, when you're at your worst, maybe. Now I don't want, I want, I want, I want to stress something here. Cause I don't want to, I don't want it to sound like I'm completely against the statement. No, no. Yeah, because I, I mean, what I would say is like, I mean, if you eat, if you eat healthy, mm-hmm. I mean, I mean, eating healthy is just, it's just good in general. Of course, it's going I mean, to be good for you. And it's know. going to be good for you. And it is going to give you, well, like you are going to get more positive thoughts yeah. coming through. Yeah. Uh, these are things that do help the positivity, do so. help, you know, feel better. Um, I would just say that, that uh, the for people that, like for people thinking that this is just going to be the magic pill type th- oh, thing yeah. and just solve everything, uh, yeah. there you have to work on other things oh, as yeah, well. You can't just change your diet I and think exercise. This, this might help with maybe at least from my, my experience. Yeah, th- th- we're just talking about our own experience. Yeah. Of course, we're not doctors. We're not you know uh, you know you shouldn't you you know take every word we say just as like the truth. This is just our experience. But I think this could help with maybe milder uh, anxiety. When yeah, you kind of feel okay. Okay, I'll just go out for a walk, clear my mind. You know, if that if you can actually do that, please do that. But uh, with with like se- severe anxiety, anything. Uh, yeah, you know that's so, a, yeah. Oh, that's an interesting. All right, there's a oh, this isn't one of the comments, but I, just, I I kind of want to bring this up because it is something I've noticed is very interesting. Have you have you ever noticed that the terms that that are used for for disorder sometimes make people triggered? Like, mm. for example, like, because uh, you refer to it as people with mild anxiety. Yeah. That does not mean that someone's anxiety does not matter. I, uh, I kind of, I kind of really yeah. want to point this out because, yeah. uh, and, and I, uh, I was guilty of this when I was, when I was younger. Yeah. So as if, so, like, for example, if I had uh, d- depression or I, I mean, I had depression, I have depression. Mm-hmm. And uh, like, if I went to a, a therapist and they told me, uh, so your your depression's actually pretty mild. Yeah. In my head I go, "No, it's not. It's pretty it, fucking it, severe. I'm it, I'm I'm like I mean, I'm I'm on it, the yeah. edge of suicide every day. Why are you telling me that it's mild?" It's mild yeah. But it, it the thing that that is very interesting about this and I am going to ask you a question about this in a second is, well, when you refer to something as being mild mm-hmm. or you refer to something as being severe, mm-hmm. I my experience is that's not really a way of saying that you have it good or you have it worse. No, it's of just you not. have different yeah. symptoms of it. Yeah, yeah, that's so true. I, and and yeah, I, I, that's it's a really good point. And uh, I, I was not uh, in all saying that uh, you know, oh, just mild. Then 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 you. Like, no, I just you, thought you, it was an interesting. Yeah, yeah, point. yeah. yeah. You, you're not allowed to to feel bad about that or, or it's just mild. <laughs> But yeah, it is. Uh, of course, it's different how how extreme the the your, your your anxiety is or anything. So yeah, I think it's it's a good, really good point that you made here. Yeah, because it's, it's like it's like the difference between uh, dissociative identity disorder and mild dissociation. Yeah, I mean, okay. my well, both involve dissociation, yeah. but 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 one of them doesn't in, involve you know more 
like closer to schizophrenia or multiple personalities. Yeah. You know, uh, like uh, mild dissociation is just the the basic level of it, uh, yeah. but it doesn't mean that it's it's you know any better or worse. No, no, no. There, there are. It's just different. Basically, what I was saying: if you're having a panic attack and feel like you're dying, some some green leaves are not going to help you. Yeah, or if you're, or if you're, or if you're, if you're, if you're just like, like having, if I'll, you're just, I'll, I'll go for a walk. If you're just enjoying your day and then you feel a slight pain in your chest and you hear sudden death, <laughs> you, you should probably. Yeah, well, yeah, that's yeah, that yeah. you might want to freak yeah. out about. But so, so oh. yeah. So by mild, that doesn't mean anything less than that you think you're dying. Yeah, <laughs> and it's it's the wrong word to use. Is, is mild? Uh, I will never use it again. <laughs> it, was a, it was a really good point. Uh, but we're gonna. Well, we're both gonna love this next one. So someone actually just sent me a meme, and it is. Uh, it's from the show Rick and Morty of, yeah. of Mr. Meesek saying existence is pain. <laughs> well, how, I related how hardcore to that. How true? How true? It is. It is. But uh, pain can be beauty. Pain can be beauty. Yes. Yeah. You have to suffer. Right. You have to suffer a little bit to uh, enjoy the good. Good as well. <laughs> well, I thought I think this. It's all about this, yin and yang. But this comes to the humor side of things. Like, no, you know, I mean, for some people, yes, they very much feel that existence is pain. Yeah. And then there's the people that that kind of have lived so long with existence being pain yeah. that they just laugh about it and they're just like, I just want to die. <laughs> like, like yeah. we don't really just want to die. No, it's just we not. feel like it. Of course not. Of course not. You know, uh -huh. but uh, they did specify, they were like, more specifically, breathing can suddenly and almost out of nowhere be difficult. Yeah. Uh, kind of like, you know, this is kind of the panic attack thing. Yeah. Uh, thinking clearly can be difficult. Tremors can come out of nowhere, followed by extreme discomfort. Yeah. Uh, that's basically explaining a panic attack. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I, to, to change this up, though, because we already discussed panic attacks. Mm -hmm. I remember I talked to you once. You uh, actually helped me through an attack that I had yep. um, that was not a panic attack, but yep. it was a fear-based attack. Have yep. you ever had uh, a fear-based attack where, so instead of like, woo, with, so like with an anxiety attack or a panic attack, you feel the the the, the panic. You you get kind of that freak out moment. Yeah. Uh, and whereas, it's like a physical pain. Yeah. And you're like, like oh i'm getting a heart, i'm having a heart attack i'm dying or uh, i'm about to faint and everything so that's that's kind of like a, more of the panic attack right but, but you were talking about a yeah the fear-based the fear-based one uh so i've only had this once in my life but it was out of nowhere i got the same feelings as a panic attack like the same physical feeling the same uh oh, like uh toughness of breath but I was afraid yeah. and I didn't know what I was afraid of. I wasn't like, I wasn't like panicking or, or mm. I wasn't anxious, but uh, I mean, to an extent, yeah. you know, but it was, it was like, it kind of felt like I was instantly put in a horror movie Oh yeah, and I, and I was afraid of something, but I didn't know what I was afraid of. Yeah. Have you ever had that? The only time I can kind of relate to what you're saying is, is actually when it, it, it it's, I do always have the fear of the the not like dying, but the moment of dying. Mm -hmm. I, I have that fear of when I kind of know, oh, this is it. I'm dying now. Uh, you know, this is my last seconds of of uh, existence and right. everything. So that's uh, so for many years I would actually. Uh, I think I wasn't seeking help at that time i think i had stopped taking uh, my medicine and, and i was just like i don't want to be like that guy who has to take medicine his own life or, or something like that i was just kind of in denial There's nothing right. wrong with me and i i actually woke up every morning and the first that thought that would come to my mind was actually i'm one day closer to death now yeah and 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 then just got uh, started thinking about that moment of dying and i would be terrified and i would get almost that the cold feeling i would get that yeah, yeah and, and and so that was just me being really afraid of deadly afraid of dying you know yeah and so again like we say when you, you use humor and everything on stage this just sounds funny you know like when i say this on stage people laugh i'm like 
one day closer to death. And I was like, ha ha. But that was actually a thought that I had. Yeah. And it was not funny at the time for me. You know? But I think people laugh because they relate. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Of, know, course, I mean, of course. Of they, course. They, uh, That's the thing about comedy is that, is that so like oftentimes, and I've noticed this with like Facebook as well, when people post memes that are very, very sad. Yeah. But because because you relate to the feeling, yeah, yeah. you can't help but giggle yeah. because you're just like, I mean, yeah, yeah. existence because is pain. O- also, again, it's with uh, rational thinking and then irrational fear or an irrational right. anxiety. You're like, oh, I've I've thought that, and I I like, and that was not rational. So mm-hmm. silly me, you know. So that's sometimes why it's funny, you know. Yeah. But yeah, that's the only time I kind of can relate to like a fear attack is is when I. Uh, really, I couldn't get it out of my mind. Right, this moment of dying, and I was just kind of obsessed with it. Yeah, uh, I, uh, and that was kind of like a period in my time that I just that was the first thought of my day. So when we wake up, it was the first thing I thought about. Jeez, I can't. It was I can't not ima- nice. It was not nice. <laughs> I can't imagine just waking up every day and going, ah, "I'm gonna die." <laughs> I was I'm like, "I'm closer to it." I'm, I'm like, yeah. I was like, "I'm one day closer to dying," you know. Yeah, and, I'm, and like I'm just twenty something. It's not like I'm, like, like like I'm uh, like. Of course, you can always have an accident or something, but it's not like I was had a deadly disease or was really really old. No, twenty something. I'm like one day closer to death. You know. <laughs> I like how I like how I uh, I say I can't imagine that, but I've had a suicidal personality for my whole life. Yeah, so you can. <laughs> so, oh no, I can very easily uh, not imagine it. Yeah. It's just kind of a reaction, you know. Sometimes yeah, we have. Yeah. Um. So we're actually uh getting close to the end here. So we just have a few more that we're gonna be close able to, to go the end. <laughs> <laughs> I just told you I'm afraid of dying. <laughs> no, we have oh, we have we have time for just a few more of these. Um, for, for those of you listening in, uh, uh, for the actually for those of you listening in who sent in these responses, first of all, thank you so much. These have been absolutely amazing, oh, yeah. and we will get to all of them in a, in an, uh, the rest of them in another episode. Uh, mm-hmm. Maybe I'll go over the rest of them with Stepner to yeah. talk about uh, his uh, perspective of definitely, of them as well. But, but let's let's get through a few more of these because these are very very good. Um, so the next one is that it can uh, look like uh, being super on top of things, and like you're the laziest person in the world at the same time, <laughs> being super organized and getting everything uh, done quickly and effectively, or nothing gets done and the house is a mess. Yeah, I can relate to that, and it can be like different aspects of your life, like oh your house is a mess because you don't. But everything else is like organized, organized, organized. Uh, and that's talk, I'm talking about other people here. I am the least organized person in the world. I, for me, organizing things gives me a panic attack because I'm like, if I make a plan, the plan is not gonna. It's gonna go south, and right. the plan is, we're not gonna be able to follow the plan, and that's gonna be horrible. So <laughs> I never make plan or like promise to be somewhere. I'm like. Uh, let's, you want to go to the movies on Friday? Friday, I don't know. Like so many things can happen until Friday. I can't make that promise. <laughs> I'm like, I, I don't want to disappoint you. So I like, I'll, I'll just, uh, I can't say anything. They were like, so are you in or out? I'm like, I, I can't be in. I can't. You can't. You can't count on me. Just go to the movies without me. This is going to be much better without me. Leave me out your, out of your plans. You know. Oh. <laughs> But then you end up going. Of course. Huh, of course. <laughs> I mean, if there's booze, there's booze. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I say that and it, it, like it, to, to the people listening in the yeah. States, they're just like, wait, a movie theater with booze? What, yeah. what, what is that? <laughs> yeah, that? In, in Iceland, you booze everywhere. Um, that's, but, how, that's how you cope with the darkness. But I don't want to, I don't want to talk about alcohol in this no, uh, because that, I, I don't want, uh, I don't want to discuss that's that. Not, it's stuff. not, it's not, a, 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 you shouldn't, uh, Use uh, alcohol as medicine. Yeah. Um. The next one we we uh, actually uh, we actually already uh, talked about that you can be so rational in your head and know that what you are feeling and why, but you still can't control it. Uh. We. Uh. And that it's actually a uh, kind of similar to the next uh, the one after that as well that that it is utterly fundamentally irrational, but it also comes with the knowledge that it's irrational and that knowledge is immensely frustrating and we didn't we uh, we, we pretty much went over this uh it's the frustrating part though that yeah, did, yeah. we didn't really discuss no of course it can be pretty yeah, frustrating like anxiety mm-hmm. is always like it's about feeling that you're not in control you yeah know? so it can be really frustrating if you feel like you're not in control 
And that's also like the question before, like with uh, people organizing and and they they when, whilst organizing everything, they feel like they're kind of in control. Mm -hmm. And uh, but uh, yeah, so this is this next one's actually very interesting. This is a uh, this is um well, one that's uh, been uh, discussed a lot with Tourette syndrome as well. Uh, it can present as overstimulation or rage, especially postpartum. Um, yeah. Yeah, people with anxiety uh, can often, you know, react to some situation with, like anger, and uh, and I think especially with people that you really trust mm -hmm. and people around you, you kind of let your guard down, and and uh, sometimes you can be really angry towards maybe somebody, you know, family member or a good friend, and they didn't really do anything, and you just like, yeah, I just kind of trusted you to uh, handle this I, I like I, I I just put everything out when uh, around you so sometimes the, the the people that are kind of closer to you and and, and uh, you know your best people they they want the best for you they sometimes have to suffer a little bit <laughs> some little anger and then you're just like I'm so sorry I just it was nothing personal it's not against you I just had to get this out you know yeah that actually goes into the next these are actually uh quite quite connected here mm -hmm. um we're gonna do three more and then uh we're gonna uh end for end for today um well, mostly because the third one is is uh, I I just love this comment <laughs> okay uh but the the one that that's actually related to was uh thought that uh, quote unquote, just going out to meet your friends is simply sometimes not at all viable uh, a viable option since it can easily cause you more harm than good. Yeah, yeah, because you 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 think, oh, I am in this kind of state now. I'm kind of vulnerable now, and I might up saying something stupid or be like offensive to my to my friends that. You know, doing that. so you kind of like okay. I'm gonna take me uh, take myself out of this situation so I won't snap at my friends, <laughs> you yeah, know, or something like that. So yeah, I think that's yeah. Uh, the next one we actually uh, already talked about as well. Um, uh, and it, but just to because I I want to read off everyone's yeah, uh, yeah. responses even if we uh, discuss them more already. Uh, I used to have bad panic attacks and anxiety attacks. Uh, you would be surprised on how to uh, how talking to someone while in a middle uh the middle of uh, uh sorry i got i got the words jumbled up here <laughs> i used to have bad panic and anxiety attacks and you would be surprised how just talking to someone while in the middle of of uh, an attack can help calm you down yeah i think uh, that's a distraction thing yeah that's oh, the distraction thing yeah. um but yeah and just to just to uh reiterate on that is uh if you like for people that are trying to figure out how to help someone with a panic attack yeah. just treat it like it is like treating like talking to a drunk person Dude, yeah. you just <laughs> talk to them about something else yeah. just distract them from what they're they're going through just talk about a movie they really love talk about something that they they yeah. been wanting to do for a while and if they and even if they're just like like why are you doing this right now you should just be like i'm just curious yeah. you know? <laughs> but it is like the fine line because like i i probably some people that are listening to this but but you earlier you said leave people alone but now you say hey distract them i think it it, it depends on the person Right. It depends on the situation. Oh, it absolutely so does. So it is a fine line. I know it, it can be kind of confusing, but I think it actually, you could actually just ask the person that is going, like, hey, do you, like, want to be alone now? Yeah. I think they will just answer, yes, I need to be alone. Or they're like, oh, no, I'm just, uh, there's something going on. Then you're like, okay, maybe I'll need to uh, try the distraction thing. That's a good point. And a mm -hmm. uh, very, very good comment to, to uh, come with. Um, no. All right. So for the last one, I just love that someone actually put this, uh, even though it's like, it's very true. I don't, I'm not making fun of it. I <laughs> no. just love this sentence. Okay. Ah, I, cause I've had this, uh, when I was younger, I can't pee if you enter the bathroom. <laughs> pee shyness. The pee shyness. Yeah. Hashtag, Hashtag pee, pee shyness. shyness. <laughs> <laughs> we ended with a hashtag. <laughs> have you ever, have you ever had that? Uh, I mean... I don't think it's like the most comfortable situation is like the men's bathroom. Uh, if you're not a, 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 a man and have never been in a man's bathroom, we have these, you know, uh, urinals, ur urinals and, and you have to stand pretty close to another man while, <laughs> whilst peeing. 
So it's not the best situation, but uh, I mean, uh, we went on vacation there. <laughs> no, 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 no. So uh, I'm, I'm like, uh, yeah, I, th- I, I, I think I've been in that situation, kind of like, okay, this is kind of difficult. Um, and and I'm, yeah, you, yeah, I've been in that, and, and like, okay, I can't actually pee, so I'm just like, I stand there for a little while, <laughs> pretending to pee. And then I just go, you know, and then that person goes out of the bathroom and I go back in. Like, now I can pee, you know. You know what's fascinating, though? It's <laughs> what's, what's so, interesting. That's so silly, though. <laughs> no, oh, you want, you want to take it silly. I can take it, I can take it fucking silly. Yeah. I mean, I, I know for a fact that there's a lot of reasons why guy, men get, get anxious in the bathrooms. For example, uh, there's actually a thing, and uh, I don't think... I know, I know. Some women know about this. Probably a lot of women know this. But guys do not stand next to each other when they when they pee in the bathroom. They, me, if there if there are ten urinals, yeah. then like and and there's two people few, in yeah. the bathroom, yeah. they'll use the ends. And Most likely, yeah. And part if, of if it, you're not a psychopath. Well, it's weird. It's weird <laughs> because I've noticed there are a lot of there are a lot of uh, like. I mean, anxiety issues with it. Like, yeah. like a lot of men, for some reason, and I, like, I, and uh, I'm gonna get to it in a second. Why I realized all, like, how I came to realize all this is just absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. First of all, men are worried that someone's gonna be staring at their dick the whole time. Yeah. So someone's also gonna oh, be. Is he is his bigger than mine? Yeah, is his oh, bigger than mine? Is I was he just more gonna of say a that. man than me? <laughs> like, uh, or or like, oh, I've man. also. Have you ever noticed that some people get anxious when their pee stream isn't? As yeah, long. I was going like, <laughs> he's, he's, oh, he's a, he has such a good stream. <laughs> he must have a manly, big manly penis with good stream coming out of it. Mine is so weak. He I must have weak. drank so much. <laughs> oh, whereas I, like, you stand, you, like, like they start first, and then you come in and you finish before them, and yeah. you're just like, oh, yeah. like, like, oh, he has more amount of pee in his body than me. He is more of a man than me. <laughs> How silly can your brain work? Like, like we like, joke, but pee shyness is yeah, actually a, a very a, it's real a thing. thing. It's a thing. I mean, it's a very real thing. And uh, I was gonna say though, what actually got me over the the whole thing of of standing next to someone, uh, like what well, was the the was moving to Iceland, being in Iceland, because uh, Icelanders they don't give a fuck. They like because in Iceland, the thing is, thing is like to be very to be very real about this. I mean. In America, when you go to the to the pools, swimming pools or public places, oh. everyone showers uh well, like with their swimsuit on or yeah, something yeah, like that. Yeah. But in Iceland, you are required yeah. to be naked, you are required to shampoo, you're required to take a shower. Yeah. Like in the States, it's kind of a free-for-all. You yeah. might shower, you might not. Yeah, Boom. Yeah, yeah. But in Iceland, you have to shower naked and you have to be around people. Up until tourism started started getting uncomfortable with this. Yeah. I mean, Icelanders just showered basically in one room, one yeah, open yeah. space. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's what got me. It's uh, not over the best. It. It's not the best for people with anxiety and everything. So, uh, like swimming pools and everything, it's always been kind of like a uh, not the best uh, kind of place for me. Uh, like I don't feel really comfortable. So I I, I rarely go to the swimming pools. And everything, so it's not the it's not the best uh, kind of environment. <laughs> I got, I get, I I almost get too comfortable at this point. <laughs> yeah. Though, like I've been in the bathrooms, like like there will be like ten urinals, yeah. and there will be a guy standing at one, and I'll just go stand right next to him. <laughs> and if it's an Iceland, I'll be like, "Yo, golden dying. <laughs> yeah, quite sad, quite you know, sad to go out. And then, you have but a of course, penis. but of course, it's Iceland, so I'll be like, "Wait, nice, sicky. Hey, <laughs> how you doing? Because <laughs> it's Iceland, we all know oh, each yeah. other. Uh, I, I had one thought though i don't know if because maybe it's just me or is it maybe something to do with anxiety because the peace shyness yeah i thought do you like when you go to the toilet you're, you're peeing do you pee straight into the water just like let it go there or do you pee like to the side to make less noise Oh yeah, so, so, oh it depends. It depends. Yeah, yeah. Actually, that's a good. It is a good point. I, yeah. I I noticed like a lot of, especially men. That the less anxiety you have, the more free you are. You just go and <laughs> and it doesn't make a lot of you just peeing in the, the the and it splashes all over and, and just like 
Like when you're when you're at a at a house party and yeah. uh, and you go to the bathroom, yeah. it's like you pee like oh well, like on the side, yeah, just oh, to make less noise, to, uh, yeah. and just like oh, so it won't splash all over and everything, you know. Not to not to be gross about it, yeah. but every once in a while you see like a little stain on the porcelain, oh, yeah. and you and you, you just try the, to clean it yeah, off you with clean your it pee. Up. <laughs> <laughs> That's just being nice. That's uh, just being uh, courteous. Uh, yeah, yeah. But oh. yeah, so. Uh, I was just wondering if it's just me because I I, I always piss, like to the side I pee to the side so it won't make as much noise I'm I'm being like uh, yeah I don't want to be rude I don't want to <laughs> like uh, being too noisy with my pee. <laughs> well, now that I think about it, there is one there is one thing I do that that is ridiculous. You know how I you know how uh, at at a lot of toilets they have like a, a target. Yeah, like in in the urinal, they'll have like a like a fly, or yeah, they'll have, have a, a sticker, uh, or a fly, sticker yeah. or something like that, and that's supposed to be where you pee to get like the ultimate yeah. uh, stream or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> like, but I always get so anxious that yeah. that's the spot that's going to cause the splashback. Yeah. Like that someone that someone just decided to fuck with everyone and yeah, just yeah. picked it off and, yeah. and moved it, <laughs> and then I pee on that and it just goes straight up. Because oh. how many times have you gone to a urinal? And then and then you you take a piss yeah. and then it splashes, splashes back yeah. and you look down and you're like, well, how am I going to explain this? Yeah, now everybody thinks I peed my pants. And you did, technically, yeah, technically, but Ta- yeah. not not really, but technically. Yeah. It was a wreckage wreckage uh, piss. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hashtag wreckage piss. Exactly. We got to end on a hashtag, but um, yeah. so we are, we are down to the end here. Uh, first of all, everyone that sent it or, or that uh, responded to uh, uh, my post, thank you all so much. If you, uh, I will get to the rest of these in another episode. So yeah. if, if uh, your, your uh, raw response was not talked about, uh, don't worry, we will talk about it in another episode. Uh, if anyone has any other uh, oh, yeah, things send us. that we didn't that we didn't discuss about anxiety, uh, no, please send them to info at mvhtshow.com. That's info at mvhtshow.com. Uh, if you want to find out more information about the podcast or just my voice of Tourette's in general, check out our Facebook. Uh, we have a Facebook. We also have Instagram. We have Twitter. Uh, I just signed up for Pinterest. Okay. Uh, I'm not really sure why. Uh, why not? Ah, but I figured, why not? Let's try it, see how it goes. So if you like Pinterest, uh, check us out on Pinterest. Um, well, you can also find our website at mvhtshow.com. Um, if you'd like to support the podcast, uh, help us get video equipment. We really want to do this on video so we can uh, so people can see the ticks that me and Elva have. Uh, also, just to to be visual you know it's it's very good to be we, visual we, most of us have really funny faces yeah we have very funny faces yeah, so this, this is going to be a lot more entertaining if you see our funny faces. oh absolutely so if you <laughs> want to help support uh God, getting the equipment uh check out paypal.me slash mvht show that's uh paypal.me slash mvht show um but, and uh also this uh this episode though uh has been sponsored by uh games of studio the secret seller iceland's first and only comedy club and uh small days volcano sauce uh, I mean, you've had the, the oh, sauce. They're so, so good. good. So good. So incredibly good. Check them out online. Uh, and we'll have links to everything that we've discu- uh, discussed in the description below or on our Facebook. You can check out there. Uh, finally, um, uh, if, if you're listening to this on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or any of that, uh, we do ask that you please, uh, if you like this, uh, you know, uh, maybe kick back, send us a, a, a rating or a review. Um, it's all about the algorithm, so it needs likes, it needs to be shared, yeah. and everything. So it's yeah, <laughs> help us. Help but if you uh, and and of course you know we do appreciate the five star excellent you know amazing reviews. <laughs> but uh, if you do want to send us a one star review, we just want your honesty. We just want to know what you guys think of the podcast, because honestly, I I also would like to you know if if there's something that you guys would like to be different, I'd like to try things out. I'll cool. try something new. Um, but just know that we do have anxiety and panic disorder. We will remember this for the rest of our lives. Uh, but we do, we will love you either way. Um, yeah. Other than that, Thodaler, thank you so much for being on the podcast. Thanks for uh, inviting me again. Yeah, and and to those of you listening out, uh, uh, check out new episodes every Tuesday. Bye.